Wabash Mountain. It may look peaceful and fun, but the only way out is a long way down. Splash Mountain at Disneyland. Splash Mountain at the Disney parks around the world is one, and if not the most, popular attractions of all time. From the adorable animatronics, the catchy music, and the drop-ins of the Briar Patch, Splash Mountain has been thrilling and splashing riders for more than 40 years. But it also holds the title of one of Disney's most controversial rides that led it to its eventual closure. Let's drop into the Briar Patch today and discover the history of this iconic attraction and its closure. Our journey takes us back to a theme park in Southern California you may know of as Disneyland. The park was growing and expanding, bringing in thousands of guests per year, and in the year of 1977, Disney opened up a four-acre land called Bear Country that revolved around the Country Bear Jamboree. The land wasn't well received from guests and saw very little foot traffic, and guests were wanting something more that Disney offered with its touch and thrills. Something that started the process for the eventual Splash Mountain was an animatronic show in America Sings. America Sings was playing to crowds more empty than the Jet Stadium. This ride was already on the Disney chopping block as well, but they wanted to find a use for the animatronics due to the costly price of them. The chairman of Walt Disney Attractions, Dick Nunes, pushed for the Imagineers to create a log flume for the parks, but was met with some pushback. The pushback was that many theme parks around the country featured a log flume attraction, and they were too common. Six years later, in rush hour traffic, Imagineer Tony Baxter was on his way to work when he thought of recycling the America Sings animatronics into a log flume. This also brought ideas from Song of the South, where our controversy starts. He also stated that some of the inspiration came from the ride at Six Flags Over Georgia, Tales of the Okafini. Yes, you heard that right. Disney Imagineers took inspiration from a Six Flags park. After planning and designing of the attraction, construction began in April 1987. Splash Mountain really racked up a bill of $75 million, which would be $203 million today, clearly making this one of the most expensive projects at the Disney property. In the initial concept, the team of Imagineers developed the attraction to be called zip a -Dee River Run, drawing inspiration from the Song of the South soundtrack. A short back history on the Song of the South, the film takes place after the abolition of slavery and is based on the collected Uncle Remus stories from author Joel Chandler. The movie at its time was groundbreaking for being a live action slash animation hybrid. Long story short, the movie follows a young boy who moves in with his mom to his grandmother's old plantation. During the movie, he learns lessons from Uncle Remus in the form of animated storytelling from Br'er Rabbit and his mission to avoid Br'er Fox and Br'er Br'er. But the main criticism of the movie is the romanticization of slavery and the character Uncle Remus reminiscing, quote, on the good old days. This movie takes place in the Reconstruction era, but many criticize the movie for not being clear of when the movie takes place. I'm not going to go in depth as the movie, that would be a whole separate topic for a whole separate video. The movie is available on small clips on YouTube, but if you want to watch the entire video, it probably has to be bootleg because Disney quickly put this in the vault due to the topic nature. Right before the ride was built, they changed the name to Splash Mountain that was thought of from the infamous and the legend himself. CEO Michael Eisner to coincide and help with the release of a film that year called Splash and showing Tom Hanks. As stated before, the animatronics from America Sings were used for Splash Mountain in multiple scenes, but the animatronics were also made from scratch for Br'er Fox, Rabbit, and Bear. During this time, Disney also had plans to build a copy of this at the Disneyland Paris parks, but was later scrapped due to budget and weather in Europe. Splash Mountain was revealed to the public in 1989, but was met with some criticism from the start. To start before the grand opening, it was supposed to open in February, but faced many boat problems. And then in July, the grand opening, guests were complaining they were getting absolutely soaked and not lightly sprayed like their ride attendant. After the park redesigned the boats to be lighter and hold seven instead of eight passengers, the park opened Splash Mountain on July 17th of 1989. Something I'll make mention of later in the video was the choice in 1990 to install a photo op to take photos of the guests coming down the hill. During that year, the Walt Disney Company announced that Splash Mountain would be coming to the Magic Kingdom in Orlando and Tokyo Disneyland. Both versions would open a day apart of each other in October of 1992. Before we go any further in the story of the Briar Patch, I want to say if you want to support the channel the best way you can, is just leaving a like on the video showing you appreciate it and like the video. And if you want to see more of our future videos, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you can be notified when we post new videos. 
a lot of time and effort goes into creating these videos as I am a one-man production, so if you want to support me, that's the best way you can. It's just liking and subscribing. Let's get back into the story. Going back on the ride camera, it became iconic for some of these photos you'll be seeing on the screen. People bringing props to the rides and taking photos with the most creative poses they possibly could. But in the late 90s, Disneyland received the nickname of Flash Mountain, as many female riders would flash the camera on the final drop into the briar pad. And then in 2011, the Magic Kingdom location in Tokyo would receive lap bars for guests that lowered the height requirement by 5 inches, allowing more riders to experience the attraction. I'm going to talk on the layout of the Disney World location in Orlando. I'm talking about the layout and what you could expect from the ride when it was operating. As you leave the station, you'll climb up its first lift hill, and then you'll take a right turn all the way around, seeing the drop into the briar patch. After the second lift hill, you'll enter another right turn, and you'll hear the first music of How Do You Do? As you make your way to the first drop of the ride, you'll face Br'er Fox's house and Br'er Rare's house, and then you'll see the bridge overhead, and you'll make your first drop into the ride. After you get into the indoor portion, you'll hear all the animatronic animals singing the first song, How Do You Do? The full version. The story starts here as Br'er Rabbit is leaving home because he is being chased by Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear. The story continues as both of the protagonists see Br'er Rabbit telling Mr. Bluebird that he was leaving because he was going to the laughing place. But a lot of people are warning him of danger ahead, but Br'er Rabbit continued on what she would eventually learn his lesson later on. You'll reach the darkest portion of this ride as you'll drop two drops into the laughing place. The animatronics here really stand out for me. Bees were attacking Br'er Bear and then Br'er Rabbit was laughing because he thought it was funny. But this animatronic really is one of my favorites of the whole ride. And then you'll see another drop into the caverns where you'll see all the stalagmites, the stalactites, and you'll see the cave. This is one of the best scenes because there's the turtles, there's the singing bullfrogs, there's the water that dances over your head. It was, tr it's truly one of the best scenes of the whole ride. The last time I got to ride this was in 2022, and a lot of the animatronics were not working in the scene, and the water wasn't working overhead, which was very disappointing, but nevertheless, this is one of my favorite scenes of the ride. Also, comment down below what your favorite scene from the whole Splash Mountain ride was. This definitely is mine. As you climb up the 50-foot final lift hill, you'll face two vultures as they begin to taunt you as you go up the final lift. And then you'll see that Br'er Rabbit was just so scared because he didn't want to be thrown into the briar patch. As you get to the top, look to your left, you'll see a hidden Mickey built into the side of the rockwork. And then you'll do 50 feet up, and you'll drop at a 45 degree angle down, reaching a top speed of 40 miles per hour. For any of your family members that didn't want to ride or get wet or too scared or too young, you they can see you from the frontier land walkway, and there's the outdoor segment as they go back into the mountain. As you get back into the portion of the mountain, you'll see all the animals seeing Zipty Doo Da in celebration of his return back to his home. And then you'll see Bear Fox and Bear Bear, and they're getting eaten by the alligator. And you'll do the final scene, and you'll sing Mr. Bluebird is singing with Bear Rabbit and telling him that he truly did learn his lesson, singing Zippity Doo Da. That's the entire portion of the ride. You can see videos online, and you'll probably see the video on this video. And then the outcries came of the Disney fandom and guests alike, and in 2020, Disney announced that both the California and Orlando locations would be receiving a retheme based on the animated movie, Princess and the Frog. Many began to speculate that the change was in conjunction with the questionable theming from Song of the South in the outcry during the George Floyd protests. But Disney stated that the retheme of the attraction was in development for five years before this. Now you'll notice that the Tokyo location was not closing. So in regards to the Tokyo attraction, the spokesperson for the park said they had no plans to retheme. And over the next years, the park revealed artwork and more details for the retheme. A thing I've seen online also is that the Orlando and California locations definitely needed refurbishment because the animatronics were just falling apart and a lot of the ride just needed fixed. The Oriental Land Company owns the Tokyo parks and they keep their attractions and animatronics in top-notch condition, so that could have been the reason for the retheme, not the outcry for the theming of Song of the South. The Orlando version would see its last riders in January 23rd of this year. This led to many people to buy all the merch and try to scalp and even make some bank from the news that this ride was closing. But that failed as many months would pass and people would try to buy this and scalp, but they had plenty of merch. On the final day, thousands of guests came as they got their final rides and waited three hours at max time for their final ride on Splash Mountain. 
and some guests even left animals as a vigil outside the ride on the Frontierland Bridge for the ride's closure. And the most notorious thing of that day was some guests were even bottling the water of the ride to attempt to keep the water or even sell it online. What a strange world we live in sometimes. We finally got more artwork for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, and the real question is, will the re-theme live up to the level of Splash Mountain? Well, let's talk about what Tiana's Bayou Adventure will include. The ride will take place after the years of the movie, and Tiana has created her own employee-owned company, and it's called Tiana's Foods. So they're building this on a salt dome that she has purchased after the events of the movie. So there is a carnival season, and Tiana is hosting the celebration for the people of her city of New Orleans. But she's missing a key ingredient for the theme of the party, and she needs you guys to go find it. So you join her and Lewis as you trip into the bayou, and you'll go through that the same layout of Splash Mountain. Nothing will change, just the animatronics. So this ride will take place in New Orleans, which kind of goes against the Frontierland theming in Disney World, but it's taken place on a salt dome. So the Imagineers said they took inspiration from Avery Island, which is a salt dome in Louisiana. Disney said they'll be recreating new animatronics for this ride and keeping some of the old ones just in case, but hopefully they're not the screen-based ones with the face that are in Frozen Ever After. From the original artwork, we saw that there was supposed to be a boat on top of the tree at Splash Mountain, but that was later taken out for new Blue Sky art, but we'll see what the theming is officially going to be in 2024 when it opens in late December. Also, you will not be seeing Dr. Facilia because he did unfortunately die in the movie, so you'll be not seeing him as an animatronic in this ride, unless they somehow brought him back. Unless they pull somehow he returned like Palpatine, yeah, you're not going to see his animatronic. Let me know if you're excited for this attraction to change into Tiana's Bayou Adventure down in the comments down below, or if you're going to miss Splash Mountain even more. The only thing I pray for this ride is they include a lot of music from the movie and some original songs, because there's not a lot of original music coming in these parks now. And it would be unforgivable for Disney not to include a beignet stand next to the attraction. Thank you for traveling this journey into the Briar Patch with me. If you enjoyed this video, like I said, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more future content on Park Hopper's Productions. If you want to see an attraction or park or anything in the theme park industry featured on this channel, comment it down below and your comment can be considered for a future video. I'm Park Hopper's Production. I'm Austin. This is the home of theme park history and theme park retrospectives. And I'm out.